So you're interested in high power certification? Great, you've come to the right spot. My name is Tim Van Milligan, and I'm gonna go over some of the common questions that people have about getting their level one certification. Uh, first of all, why get certified? Other than being a lot of fun, um, certification has a, a lot of advantages. First of all, um, it's a rite of passage. When you start flying the big rockets, people are gonna look at you differently, particularly your family. They're gonna, they know that now this is no longer a kid's sport, but it's an adult sport. And they're gonna look at you differently. Um, second, uh, when you get that rite of passage, people in your own rocket club are gonna look at you different. Um, when they go to ask your opinion on things, particularly about buying range equipment and things like that, because you have that level one certification, they're gonna, your opinion is going to mean more to them. And then third, <clears throat> Um, in the NAR, um, it really helps the NAR and Tripoli um, to get um, status within the government framework. Uh, when they can go to lobby Congress and say, you know, we have 4,000 members and 80% of them are certified, that carries a lot more weight in Congress and, and when they're lobbying in, in state governments than saying we got 4,000 members and only, you know, 10% are certified. So you're really helping the hobby when you get certified. And then finally, it also carries weight when you're talking with other people that are just getting into the hobby. Um, when they see that you're certified and you tell them that what they're gonna <clears throat> be doing is a safety issue, they're gonna look at you different. Um, it's gonna carry different weight to them as opposed to if you're not certified. When, you're, when you say, don't do that because it's a safety issue, I really appreciate that um, because that helps our business too because we want everybody to be safe. Um, so when they're, when they're doing safe things, because you're certified, that really, really helps the hobby. So what is the most common question about certification? Um, first of all, people have this impression they wanna buy a mid-power rocket and they wanna fly it on E's and F's and G's but then they want to take it and go, can I fly it on an H? And the answer is yes, you can. Like this, this Aerotech Initiator Kit and this Mad Cow uh, Solar Express Kit, they're both 2.6 inch diameter kits. That means the diameter is 2.6 inches. Um, and they can fly on an H motor. But I would recommend that you, you don't use them for certification. Um, the reason is, when you fly these on an H motor, they're going to go really high, um, 2,500 feet and higher on an H motor. Um, and that's going to be really high and it's going to be hard to see. And when you're going for a level one certification, um, you have to get your rocket back and it has to be in a condition where it could fly again. And if, when they go so high, there's a good chance you're going to lose it. And if you lose it, your certification attempt is over. Um, you're basically going to have to start over again. And so now you're going to have to buy another rocket and another motor, and it gets really expensive then. And I want to I want to see you saving your money. Um, I you know this is good for you know get your certification on something bigger, and then use this when it's not so critical, and you know then go for an H motor on it, and that's that's really cool. Um, so what I recommend is something that's four inches in diameter. This is a lock kit, this is four inches in diameter. Um, we also have over here a Mad Cow Super DX3. I don't know if you can see that all on the camera here. This is a Super DX3. Um, I like this one for a certification. Um, for one thing is not only you can get a cert cert level one certification on it, you can get a level two on it. Um, and it also has rail buttons. And you're gonna want rail buttons um, as opposed to launch lugs. And you can always swap out, you know, if you get the lock kit, you can, you can swap out and put rail buttons on it. Let me just lean that back there. The rail buttons, um, you can just take the, rail, the launch lug off and put rail buttons on it. We sell rail buttons. Um, with the rail, you got a longer, straighter, stiffer launcher, which means that the rocket's gonna come off the pad a lot straighter and go a lot higher. You want to go straight on a level one attempt. Don't, please, you know, don't angle the rocket on a level one attempt because what happens then is the rocket's arcing over 
and now it's, it's going to be going at a, at a horizontal velocity. And whenever you have velocity, there's a, there's a better chance of stripping off the parachute. And that's typically the thing that goes wrong with level one certifications is parachute problems. So go straight up um, so that you deploy at zero horizontal velocity and hopefully select your delay time right. Um, another question that people have is, should they go with a 29 millimeter or a 38 millimeter motor? Um, you can do either. Um, this is a, a 29 millimeter case from Aerotech. This is a 29 from Cesaroni. You can see they're about the same length. Uh, this, is, this is a G motor case, like the G64. You can see that it's a little bit longer. So if you were going to fly a rocket on this, like on the Aerotech initiator, you're going to have to remove that engine hook. And I've showed you how to do that in a previous video. So go to the Apogee website, go down to uh, downloads, and then go down to the advanced construction videos, and that's where you'll find that stuff. Um, what I recommend is that you replace that hook with an engine retainer. And this is a... Uh, a mad cow retainer and basically you slide it in and it allows you to use different lengths so most of the kits don't come with the retainers so this is an, an additional uh, accessory that that I do recommend um, pretty much everybody will need retainers uh, so just go ahead and do that um, comparing it to the 38 this is a 38 millimeter casing from uh, um, Cesaroni, this one is from Rouse Tech, which is the equivalent to the Aerotech. Um, personally, I like the 38s, 38 millimeter diameters, as opposed to the 29s. Um, and the reason is liftoff velocity. The liftoff velocity is determined by the average thrust. And the bigger diameter motors have typically lower average thrust. Um, this is this is a uh, propellant grain from a, a 38, and this is a 29. You can see that the thickness here, the, the duration of the burn is determined by that thickness. And so the, the 29 or the 38s have a longer thickness, so they will burn longer, which brings down your average thrust. So these are going to take off slower, and you're going to like that anyway because it's, it's more visually appealing. Um, and then slower speeds, remember, decrease the stress on the rocket. So I do recommend 38s, but you can use the 29s. Um, just remember that they're going to go a lot faster on the 29s. And if you want to keep things slow, go with a 38. Um, people also want to know, should they get uh, a fin with plastic fins, uh, plywood fins or fiberglass fins and this is this one here it has plywood this kit here this is a mad cow black brant this has fiberglass um, and then the aerotech one has plastic uh, i prefer on a certification attempt i prefer the the plywood fins and the reason is that if you have a hard landing plywood is going to deform um, because it's, it's a wood fiber, it can crunch. The plastic's going to break. Um, the fiberglass, what will probably happen is the whole fin will just pop right out of its slot. Um, and it can be repaired, and that's fine. Uh, but the, the plywood will deform, and there's a, a chance that the rocket could fly again. And basically, that's the criteria, is if the rocket survives and could be flown again without any repair, then you get your level certification. With plywood, because it deforms, you know, you could say, you could argue the case that, you know, it's flyable again. Um, so that's my preference on that. Um, and then finally, um, you'll probably need, um, this is um, Nomex wadding. I like this better than um, regular wadding because it's reusable. So that's a nice additional accessory. Um, if you're launching on your own, um, we have this new flash pack launch controller. It's a wireless launch controller. You can plug in your igniters right into it. Put this right underneath the pad. You can stand really far back. This will, has a range of 550 feet. So you can get really far back and that's good for you know, a level one certification. But typically if you're going to be doing level one, you have to do it with a, lo a local club anyway. 
So you probably won't need this, but um, if they don't have the equipment, this is what is a good option. Um, additional options, um, Cesaroni and Aerotech both have delay cutting tools. Like I said before, you want to pop your parachute right at the top. Um, Cesaroni uses the ProDAT tool. Aerotech has their delay drilling adapter tool. Um, both of these allow you to tweak the delay so you get right at the top. And how do you figure that out? Well, you're going to use Roxim, of course. And I, I've talked about Roxim before on the videos. So that you're going to want to have. Um, and then also, um, if you want to use different reloads in the cases, both Aerotech and Cesaroni have spacer systems. This is the Cesaroni one. You just drop it in. So not only can I use a two grain motor in this, I can also use a one grain. And you can get, they have a starter set that gives you a, a three grain case and a six grain case. Um, plus you get the ProDAT tool. This is a pretty good buy um, if you're going to go your level one all the way up to a level two because you can fly a J motor in that too. Aerotech has their spacer system and it looks like this. And this, they'll have a one for 29 and one for 38 and a 54, I believe. So that kind of covers an overview of getting your high power certification. Um, on our website, um, if you go onto the, the kits under the products and scroll down, we have what we kind of um, consider our level one kits, kits that would be good for level one certification. You're gonna find some of each of these in there uh, but this video covers a lot of different options, and you can pick and choose which options you'd like to do. Again, my name is Tim Van Milligan. Um, I'm from Apogee Components. We're at www.apogeerockets.com. Please come and visit us and let us know what you think of these videos. Thank you.